Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, thank you to all my later subscribers and for all my, um, um, not to say older subscribers, but everyone that has been following me from the beginning. Again, Paul, I can't thank you enough. Um, you know, definitely appreciate, um, you know, all your comments. Um, a lot of the comments keep me going. So today, guys, um, this is a video that I've always wanted to make. And this is a video about 996 prices because um, I've been following a couple um, Instagram channels. And also, guys, I am on Instagram. I am at Garth Loves Cars. So I definitely um, post there on a daily basis um, or every other day more than I do on YouTube. Then you will be able to also see my stories as far as the things that I eat and my drunken moments. <laughs> no, just kidding about that. But um, one of the things that I really wanted to touch um, base on is um, 996 prices because I have noticed um, on a couple of sites like PCAR Market, um, Flat6 and um, a couple other sites on Instagram where a lot of people have been very surprised at some of the going prices for, you know, 4S's and even turbos and even normal 996's where, you know, now I'm seeing normal 996's that are trading for about, you know, some, some cars with more than 50,000 miles, you know, $32,000, $35,000, you know, and we're not, we're not even in the, in the ballpark of um, 40th anniversary or, you know, 4S's or turbos. This is just normal 996's, you know, some Targa's, some of them have low mileage, you know, but we're seeing examples with, you know, north of 60, 70,000 miles that are selling for, you know, 27,000, you know, $28,000. So, um, I mean, me personally, I am in no shape or form surprised by this because I have been following the 996 market, I would say since um, 2000 and maybe 13, you know, if I can go that far back, maybe even earlier, you know, because I've always wanted to own a 996 Forest and I've watched, you know, multiple videos with Jeremy Clarkson and Top Gear guys and, you know, all different shows, you know, comparing the, the 4S to the Turbo and, you know, and things like that. So I've been following the market for a long time and I've watched, I mean, honestly, I've seen 996 turbo prices, you know, back in the day, you know, when they, when they really took a dip, you know, I mean, you could have, you could have gotten a 996 um, turbo, you know, maybe for anywhere sometimes 25 grand. I mean, I'm being really honest about this, 25 to like 26, $26,000, you know, and, and that was the norm, you know, maybe even, you know, maybe at 28, 30, you know, 30, I would say was kind of like that midway point where you were like, okay, you know, it's a, it's, it's a bit pricey now, you know, I'm sure some of this can beg to differ, but I've been watching the market, you know, all over from Craigslist to, you know, Auto Trader to when car grooves became big, you know, so anyway, so um, I've been watching the market trending, you know, I, I, I mean, what the last, I would say the last cheap 4S that I saw, and this was about a year ago or maybe two years ago, was a convertible lapis blue with the, with the beige interior, with wood steering wheel. Um, I think the car had about 90 something thousand miles convertible out of the Midwest. And that car was being sold for $17,000 and it was a manual. And I even thought I was about to pull the trigger and I was like, no, that's still a little bit too high for 4S, <laughs> you know? And, and here we are with the market now, you know, look at 4S prices and people think, oh, you know, you know, 4S is, um, you know, there are some, some of these 4S's that are being sold or are being, are, are being sold for too much. And I'm just like, I don't know if these guys have been following the market as long as I've been following the market because, I mean, 4S's were at $17,000 at one point. I mean, I remember, I didn't even look at 4S's because, you know, I'm, when I say I didn't look at 4S's, I mean, I really wanted one. But at the prices the turbos were going for, you know, my eyes were more keen on that, you know. And then as I saw the, tur the C4S, the turbo prices just, you know, turbo prices went from one night to the next day to like through the roof. You know, that's the way I feel personally about how the turbo prices change. I mean, you know, I was looking, okay, you know, what, why, why should I get a 4S? Why don't I just buy a turbo, you know, for $30,000, $35,000 with low mileage on it than a 4S? And then the turbo prices just literally for me felt like it went from one day to the next through the roof. So 
that put my eyes back on a C4S, you know, because I was like, okay, I got to grab one of these before the prices go up. And to be honest with you, I mean, again, I saw 4S is being traded for anywhere from $17,000 to like, I think at the time, 4S is the maximum I ever seen a 4S that was selling for was anywhere from about twenty five to 26000 It wasn't really... It was, and I mean, I'm talking, this is low mileage examples, no high miles, no like, you know, no issues. This is like low mileage, clean interior. And then 4S prices now are climbing up and up and up and up. And that's what's driving the, the clean examples of the 996, 911s up as well. Because here I am now on Car Gurus, and for instance, you know, and you know, Car Gurus is my go to site because I like the way it's set up. You know, I like, you know, where you can compare prices, you can see things, you can put it at na nationwide, you know, and you know, you can kind of get a feel for what the market is really, you know, saying. And I, I feel that Car Gurus, when the prices are more realistic, to the market prices than Auto Trader, you know, where Auto Trader, I mean, some of those, like, some the same cars you'll see on Car Guru for a lesser price would be on Auto Trader for maybe two, three thousand dollar difference. And I'm not promoting one site from the other, but that's just the way I feel. Craigslist, you know, again, that could get a little bit sketchy. You know, some of the cars that are being advertised on there, you know, yes, you might catch a deal here and there, but you might put a lot of work into it too. You know, I find all, most of the cars on Car Gurus, you know, and I've actually bought about three or four cars from car gurus within the last year. And every single car has turned out to be something that I didn't have to really do anything to. They've been true to the word, you know, so I'm not, I'm no, in no shape or form getting any money from car gurus. You know, this is just my personal preference. So, I mean, and for instance, you know, you, you know, this is the first thing that came up. You look at this 2002 911 Carrera convertible, 86,000 miles, $16,000, you know, pretty not bad for, you know, 2002 and, you know, looks clean. Um, you know, what the market is really kind of, you know, this is this. But again, you know, this is another thing I want to let you guys know that, you know, these are the deals to be snapped up right now. I'm telling you, we're, we're seeing the last heyday of the cheap 911. And when I say cheap 911, not everyone has $16,000 cash sitting around. You know, I'm, honestly, I personally don't see the point in financing something like this. You know, it's just, you know, it's the interest you're going to pay. Yes, it's going to accrue value over time, but it's better, you know, when you put cash into an investment like this and, you know, over time, you know, watch your money grow. And of course, you know, I would insure this with Haggerty Insurance because, you know, again, I'm paying on, I'm paying $97.25 a month for full coverage insurance. I get to set the value of the car, you know, and, um, and, and it's full coverage insurance from Haggerty as opposed to going to the big insurance companies like Geico and State Farm and all these companies, you're paying like $5,000 a month for full coverage insurance. It's a classic car. You never really drive. So I think Haggerty makes a lot of sense for me. So a car like this, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people are very scared. They're scared of getting, you know, a, a classic car like this because then they think the insurance is going to be through the roof. That's what I thought in the beginning. And my insurance was through the roof until a friend of mine told me about Haggerty. And I mean, the customer service is bar none. You know, um, everything about it is just absolutely amazing and and you're you you get in you're in the Haggerty Drivers Club so you get invited to like classic car meets and you know special events and things like that and even Porsche events that are being held around the country you know they have their booths you also get exclusive things so I enjoy having Haggerty and you know Hey, you're paying a hundred bucks a month for full coverage insurance and you get, you get roadside assistance, everything, and you get to set the value of your car. Obviously, like I said in previous videos, you're not going to, you know, set the value of a 996 when the market's commanding around uh, a normal 996 around at max 20, 25,000, maybe 30,000. You're going to set it at 60,000. It's just not going to happen. Maybe you could set it at 32,000 based on the options and, and, and what the car, you know, the condition the car is in, you know, but so. Anyway, so like in for instance, you know, these are the things, the bargains that I, I think people should snap up now, you know, like in for instance, yes, this car has got 86,000 miles, but, you know, I'm looking at uh, what is it, you know, 964s with 170,000 miles that are still being sold for 60 grand. 
You know what I mean? So it's it, when it comes to a portion and when it becomes when it gets into the collector car um, area, you know, mileage is irrelevant, especially, you know, if the car has been in good condition, you know, you have your paperwork, you can prove your receipts, things like that. And over time, I'm telling you, a car like this that you can purchase right now for $16,000, you know, over time in another six, seven, eight years, that's going to go up in value because these cars are continually, you know, some of them are getting into the junkyard, so there's less of them on the road. So when you find something like this, you know, in excellent condition, you know, snap it up, guys. 16 grand, it's like nothing. 86,000 miles. I mean, I've never driven this car. I don't know the story, but, you know, looking from the pictures, I mean, this car is absolutely clean. I mean, look at this thing, you know. So, I mean, $16,000. You know, I remember the days when I saw Buick Grand Nationals that people were selling for $5,000 in, in the, the 50th anniversary edition, if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Try and find a, a Buick Grand National right now uh, with uh, 50th anniversary for $5,000. Won't happen. See, the other thing is, you know, when you're looking for a, a, a 996, you know, a 4S or a turbo, or whatever, you know, you have to remember something. These cars were made by Porsche. So these engines are built. I mean, a friend of mine uh, picked up a 996 4S the other day for $8,000. The car had 200,000 miles and the car still drives like a dream. So one of the things is when it comes to, I personally like to buy um, higher mileage cars because of the simple fact, especially the 996s, you know, most likely, most most of the issues that affect a lot of these cars like bore scoring and you know IMS and all these other things you know hoses and all of that generally you know a car that made it to 95 96,000 miles maybe even a hundred a hundred thousand miles most of those would have been corrected already you know so that just tells me that you know this engine is durable you know and it's able to continue for maybe even another another hundred thousand maybe even 150 thousand miles you know so not that the lower mileage cars you know have any issues but from all the, the um, you know the discussion sites and you know chat chats chat uh, sites that i've been on you know most of the ims issues bore scoring issues um are generally anywhere from around thirty thousand miles to about 60,000 miles. And I'm, now I'm not saying this is the specific case. I'm saying this is what I concluded after being on a lot of those, you know, uh, message boards and things like that. So I personally prefer to have, uh, especially when it comes to a Porsche 996, I prefer to buy them, you know, when it, it has a little bit of a higher mile, you know, maybe around 70,000, 75,000. You know, my sweet spot is around, you know, 86,000 to like 98,000. That's, that's where I generally look. You know, I kind of, you know, it's just a thing of mine. I like to break the car into a hundred thousand miles as opposed to getting it already at a hundred thousand miles but yeah definitely guys do not stray away from the higher mileage cars trust me you know the, especially the 996 if it's made it that far generally most of you know the things that are supposed to affect the car again like the ims the bore scoring and all those things generally should have already been you know um happened and fixed you know so definitely um you know and and it's also you get a good i mean but then again the prices between you know a, a, a car with 90 something thousand miles and a car with seventy thousand miles it's you're talking a thousand to two thousand dollars one of the other things that I've noticed is that, you know, since I've been looking through um, all the sites and um, looking through the ads, is that whether it's a normal 996, you know, a Carrera 4, 40th anniversary, 4S or Turbo and so forth, the manual cars are becoming harder to find. So, you know, that's also, you know, an indicator at the fact that people are buying these, they're keeping them or they're storing them. You know, because before when I used to look, there were lots of manual cars out there, but now it's few. You know, you'll find literally, let's say there's 300 cars for sale, you'll find maybe, you know, 75, 80 of them are manuals and the rest of them are Tiptronic. So if you're in the market for one of these cars, guys, this is what I'm telling you guys, and I can't say this enough. This is the time to purchase a 996. I've seen 996s sold on first flat six for, for sums that people, you know, are, are like, oh my gosh, what what's going on? But don't be surprised. 
surprised that the 996 prices are going up because these are the new collector cars. These are the cars that people in my generation grew up looking at and we've always wanted to purchase one. But at that time we were either in high school, you know, some of us are approaching college and we didn't have the funds or the finances to purchase these cars. But now that we're in the position to purchase these cars, a lot of guys are snapping these up. And you know, manuals are becoming very rare and even Tiptronics, you know, with, with uh, certain different um, specifications on it are becoming very rare. So I would advise anyone, if you are in this market for one of these cars, is to snap them up now. Like in, for instance, look at this, this one here, let me go out. This one is a 2003 Carrera 4. So a Carrera 4 is a four wheel drive. So this is not a forest with a wide body, but it has a four wheel drive. And a 2003, I believe this came with the 3.6 liter engine, which is pushing 320 horsepower. And I can tell you from personal experience, a four wheel drive with the 320 horsepower is an absolute beauty to drive. Look at this, this thing is selling for 20,500. 20, and it has, it's a six speed manual. So this one here, I think is an absolute bargain. You know, I think a lot of people also, they overlook, you know, this is accident free. They overlook the Carrera 4. I think the Carrera 4 is one of the most understated 996 models out there because everyone is looking at turbos, 4S's, 40th anniversaries, you know, but the Carrera 4 is just as good as a 4S, you know, minus the fact that it doesn't have the wide body. I mean, look at this one. I love the combination. I absolutely love silver with a blue um, top on it. It's just, I mean, that's just one of my, or, you know, silver with a red top on it. I'm not a big fan of chrome wheels, but, you know, the wheels are always interchangeable. But this car is an absolute beaut, guys. Come on, 20 grand for a Porsche Carrera 4. I mean, these are the last days of us even hearing about stuff like this. And this one has also been optioned with the um, blue as well um, on the door sills. Also, I'm not a big fan of this. I'd rather it be carbon fiber, but you know, it has, a, I mean, this is a custom order, silver inlays on the steering wheel, um, as well as you see the blue down there. Um, car looks absolutely clean. Six speed manual, 20 grand Carrera 4. And I mean, optional white gauges, this car is an absolute beaut, you know? This is a beaut. And what is this, 50,000 miles on the clock? Oh my gosh, guys, somebody snapped this car up and it's been optioned with the blue seat belts. I mean, this is a keeper. This is something you, let's see here, let's see. No dead pixels, no dead pixels anywhere here. Has everything looks in good, perfect working order. I mean, look at this car, guys. I mean, you could always change out the wheels, but. I would literally buy this car, you know, but I'm in the market for another 4S. So I would literally, if I want if I was in the market for this car, I would literally buy this car. Like, I mean, a Carrera 4, silver with blue top, 50,000 miles, six speed manual for $20,500. Seriously, I mean, can it get any better than that? And these are the last days of us seeing these cars going for those prices. You know, uh, let's see what we've got here. Um, it's in Colorado. I would literally take a plane flight over there and drive that car back to New York. The car went from $25,000 down to $20,000. It's been at this dealership for 204 days. So that, that tells me that this dealer is willing to bargain. If it's been there for literally almost a whole entire year on the lot, you know, and it hasn't been sold. Um, don't know what the story is, you know, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, the car, no one's going to sell a car that doesn't, can't drive off the lot, right? So it's also for you to do your due diligence, you know, and check out the car before you take it off the lot or take it to the local Porsche dealership and have them do a PPI. You know, every dealer has a different price, but guys, come on, these are the last days we're going to see these cars go for that much. Trust me. So I would definitely pick this car up. So this is one of the things that I was talking about um, in regards to the prices of the 996 4S. Here we have a 2003 911 4S um in colorado and again you know mileage the the distance of where of where these cars are um i mean then again you know you know minus that we have this um you know virus situation that's going around you know what i would personally do is i would buy a ticket um on a regional airline fly to colorado pay for this car and drive it back to new york i mean it's 1600 miles but you know if you have the time and you know the resources you know 
I, I mean, I think the fun in this is going to purchase this car and driving it back to New York. I mean, you know, and the difference in prices, as I was saying before, like, you know, you can purchase a 2004 9964S and, you know, at $25,000 and the car has, you know, 80 to 90, even 100,000 miles. Here you have a 2003 uh, 4S. Here's an example. Um, this one is being sold 21,997. I mean, roughly, you know, $22,000. Add your taxes and your fees and your title and all that other things in it. You know, you're probably going to round out to about, you know, $23,000 in New York State. But I mean, look at this car. This is a 2003. This is a, a 4 9, uh, 9964S. And I mean, you know, judging from the pictures, this car is fairly clean. You know, um, twenty twenty two thousand dollars. I mean, you know, whether this is a stick or a Tiptronic, I think is an absolute steal. I mean, look at this car. You know, I believe that is a seal gray. Um, it has the um, the optional um, you know sport exhaust look. You know, I'm not sure if this is because the sport exhaust did come with those tips, or you can order it um, your car with those tips. Um, I believe this is most likely a Tiptronic. Has the Bose system in it uh, for twenty one thousand. Yes, I'm correct. It's a Tiptronic. But if you notice, this car has the optional carbon fiber um, on the steering wheel as well. So you know, um, I believe the carbon fiber is also around the dash. Also. So special order is the white gauges, um, you know, carbon fiber around the um, center console. Um, also, if you notice on the um, glove box opener, that's also special order to have it in the, um, I think it's like a, I forgot what it's called, but it's like a special silver. Um, also carbon fiber and um, the, the special order also on the um, handbrake. So I think this is an absolute steal. I mean, Tiptronic, and honestly, guys, I've been looking for a Tiptronic as well because I love my manual car, but you know, some I've driven a Tiptronic before and you don't really lose much of that entertainment. You know, I've also put that in one of my videos where it was called, you know, Tiptronic versus manual. You don't lose a lot of the entertainment with the Tiptronic as you do in the stick. Yes, you know, you can take the engine up to some higher um, rev RPMs. And I'm not a manual purist, to be honest with you. I mean, yes, I agree with um, some of the purists that a manual, you know, in a sports car is the best way of unleashing, you know, that whole sports car um, DNA. But, you know, there's sometimes, you know, especially you live in New York State, you cannot avoid traffic even in the summer months. I mean, right now would be the perfect time to take a, a, a manual car out, but because of this, um, you know, quarantine or lockdown. But I don't, I would not go against a Tiptronic. I'm actually in the market for a nice Tiptronic as well, but I'll also keep my, keep my, um, my, uh, my manual 4S. So, you know, again, the prices with the 996s, um, you know, they, it, it depends on where you're going. It also depends on the options. I think, you know, this one right here is a very good car. I mean, it has the sports seats. Uh, you know, it's very well option, you know, I mean, as 996s, there weren't that many options that, you know, would make a big difference as far as, you know, the car is concerned. I mean, yes, there's some models out there that have like, you know, carbon fiber steering wheel, sports seats, you know, um, uh, the GPS and, you know, intermittent wipers, uh, rain sensing wipers. But again, you know, when you're buying a sports car, especially like a 996, I mean, does that really matter to you unless you, you want to collect the car and park it in the garage? Right. So, guys, I'm going to run through this video really quick. I mean, this car is absolutely beautiful. At $22,000, I mean, this is a drop in the bucket. You know, I mean, look at this car. It's absolutely clean. Now, let's go and see if there's any issues with this car. 70,000 miles. It's been through six owners. Um, and let's see here. Uh, yeah, well, I, I understand why it's $22,000. The car had two accidents, and who knows what those accidents are. Now, if you do a Carfax on the car and the accidents are maybe, you know, maybe a, a minor front-end uh, damage, but, you know, two accidents, it gets leery. But honestly, if the car drives great, you know, come on, dude. At $22,000 for an 03 4S with 70,000 miles, you can't go wrong. You know, here you have a turbo for $46,000. And these are the ones that, I, you know, as I said before, for. This is the that I consider the bargains in, in the 4S market. I mean, this is a, a 996, this is a regular Carrera, and this car is being sold for. Wait, let, let's go through the pictures really quick. I mean, car looks clean, Tiptronic as well, but again, 
I am not against the Tiptronic. You know, I'm not a manual purist. Yes, the Tiptronic, uh, the hand levers and the shifting is a little bit icky. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, these cars are great cars to drive on the weekend. You know, at $17,000, I mean, come on, you walk in there. It's a steal, you know, guys. So, I mean, my whole take on the 996 market is, you know, prices are going to go up. You know, the 996 has now become, you know, the new, I would say, you know, 993 in, in the collector's market. You know, if you really want to get in, I mean, look at this one. Here's a 2001 for 25 grand. So the prices, you know, fluctuate. Look at this, two, a 2002 for $15,000. And, you know, what I'm saying is, guys, okay, I'm going to let you get on a little secret. Maybe, you know, one of you guys want to buy this car i've had my eyes on this car for at least the last eight months i mean i haven't been down to the dealership yet but there must be something wrong with this car because you know it's been on the market for a very long time i've i even called a dealer and i uh, tried to negotiate with them because they had this price this car listed at i think around twenty six thousand before i purchased my black car and i offered them twenty five thousand cash and they refused to budge on the price. Now I believe the car is down to $22,000 or $23,000. You know, 992 is $23,000. So they didn't want to budge on the price. Now the price is down. One of the things I've noticed about this car is if you notice on one of the pictures, I asked the salesman to send me a picture. The car is listed as, you know, no accidents um, and things like that. But you see, if you notice where they took the pictures, you know, you can't see, you know, there's, so what Porsche did with the 996, there's, sticker, there's a sticker on the front hood that tells you about the options. You know, if the car has been hit on the front, the hood's been changed, you cannot change that you can't get that sticker again. So that'll be an indicator that this car could have possibly been in an accident. So it's the same for the rear. There's some stickers on the rear as well, where, you know, tells you mobile service and everything. And, you know, those can't be replaced as well if the car's been in an accident. Sure, you can get another bumper cover and put that on, but some people won't, you know, they'll just, if they ordered a part from Porsche, it won't come with that sticker, I believe. So this car, the picture was taken where you can't see that. So I called the salesman and I asked him, you know, take, uh, send me a photograph of the stickers on the engine. When he did send me the photograph, the stickers weren't there. So my assumption was the car was involved in a rear end accident and the, the cover, the engine cover was changed and um, the stickers weren't included because there's no other explanation why, you know, the stickers were removed. So uh, this car has been there for quite a while. I mean, I'm, I loved, I love the combination. I love the lapis blue. It has a GPS that fills out the whole center console. I like that. So the center console doesn't look a little bit, you know, cut off. Um, it doesn't have the bow system, but I love the lapis blue over that gray. Um, again, I'm not opposed to the Tiptronic cars. I'm looking for a Tiptronic car. Uh, this one's got 95,000 miles. I love the black gauges. I love everything about this car. But, um, you know, there to me, the thing about it is this car has been sitting for a very long time. And I'm sure there's people that went and saw it to see this car. Um, again, there's another thing to look for. No dead pick. Well, yeah, there is dead pixels because it's supposed to say low. So that's a thing to look for, you know, but it's not a it's not a deal breaker to get a new, um, you know, um, AC unit um, or, or HVAC unit. But I mean, the car looks wonderful on the inside. Um, beautiful on the outside as well. Um, you know, look, I mean, look at that lapis blue. I absolutely love that color. So this is one car that I've had my eyes on for a very long time. And I am like seriously considering uh, pulling the trigger um, on this car. It's in VA. So chances are, if I go and see this car, it's either I'm going to drive this car back. And if I don't, it'll be a big waste of time. So that's my major concern is that the engine cover does not bear the factory stickers that it should. Now, a front end hit on a 99 six i don't mind you know if it's been repaired you know depending on how hard the car was hit you know but the rear end that's where the engine sits so if a car was hit in the rear and there's not that much distance from the bumper um guard to the engine you know i'm, I'm a bit wary about it i haven't i mean i heard the car run you know again you know over the internet it's very difficult to hear so anyway i think you know if this car checks out, this is a good deal. Um, I've had my car, my eyes on this car for a long time. This is a 04. So, you know, anyway, guys, to sum up this video, I mean, listen, guys, 
invest, 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 invest. You know, this is, you will not see these cars come around for these prices. And as I said before, you know, when I saw that Buick Grand National back in the day selling for five for $5,000, the 50th anniversary. I mean, I think those cars right now are maybe north of $40,000, maybe even more depending on the mileage. And I think it's this, the what we saw with the um, 964 generation, the 993 generation with prices that are now, you know, in the 40,000s to the 80, 90, 100 thousand if it's a turbo s you know i think this is going to happen for the for the 996 generation i mean look at this car thirteen thousand nine hundred dollars a fourteen thousand dollar convertible 996 that you could have you know endless summer fun in this car i mean look at this thing even and i'm pretty i mean at that price it's a tiptronic but again guys i've driven the tip i've driven the stick you know it's it, I'm not a purist. If you're not a manual purist, trust me, you're not really losing much by getting a Tiptronic car. You know, it's just the feel, you know, the, the connectivity as far as the driver and the car is concerned. That's what you get from the manual. I'm sure a lot of purists are going to be upset, but I'm not a purist. And I, I'm all for about, you know, modernization, but to a certain extent. But when it comes to the 996, you're not losing that much. $14,000, you know, for a, a, a 2001 Porsche. Guys, there's going to be a day when you're going to remember this. Yes, two accidents on a car. There's going to be a day where you're going to remember this and you're going to regret that you did not invest in a forest. So that being said, guys, like, like subscribe and share. Um, one, of the, one of the secrets um, about searching for cars that I want to add is, you know, when you're searching for a car or a specific like a Porsche, see, one of the things is a lot of dealers, you know, the guys who work in dealers, you know, some of them are kids, they're young. So when they take the photo of a car, you know, when I was looking for my 4S, they'll list the car as a Porsche 911. You know, but when they advert, when they upload it to the, um, the like car gurus and these sales sites, it'll just go on the Porsche 911 because they do it by category. It won't go on the Porsche um, 911 4S. So when you're looking for a specific car, or specific configurations, it's really good to spend the time and look through every single ad because I've found at least more than 10 911 4Ss that weren't under the, the, the category of 911 4S. So this is, and that's how I found my black car actually. And that car, Oh my God, I fell in love right away and I drove four hours there and back to purchase this car. So, you you know, that's a tip when you're searching for these cars, you know, just look under 911 because there's a lot, I've found a more than 10 4Ss that were just listed on the Porsche 911 and they were, you know, fantastic value. So guys, um, definitely, you know, look that stuff up. And again, Haggerty Insurance, you know, Haggerty, if you have a 911, 996, um, you know, Haggerty Insurance is great for uh, classic cars. You get full coverage insurance and, um, you know, you pay, I mean, little or next to nothing, you know, and if you have any issues with your car, you know, they are on top of it. They're, you know, people are there, always there to answer the phones and everything. So, you know, definitely invest in the 996 4S, guys. I am definitely going to buy at least two more of those cars, you know, when the time comes, you know, once we get through all this virus situation and everything's back on track, I'm definitely going to do that. So, um, yeah, if you live in the New York State area, if you have a 996, that you want me to review, please just hit me up. I'm on Instagram um, at Garth Loves Cars, same handle as my YouTube channel. Um, so like, subscribe, and share, and tell me your thoughts. Thanks, guys. I can't eat my car.